Good evening, everyone. I want to thank the town employees, town moderator, town manager, the board of selectmen, finance committee, and other boards and committees, town meeting members, and the residents of Plymouth for all that you have done during these challenging times and for giving me this opportunity to speak with you tonight to offer a brief update on what is happening up at the State House. It is my pleasure to serve you on Beacon Hill, and I have been grateful for the cooperation and efforts of the town in our legislative delegation. Today, I have the privilege of speaking on behalf of the entire Plymouth delegation, Senator Susan Moran, Representative Matthew Meritori, and Representative Randy Hunt. It falls to me this year to deliver the delegation's best wishes and appreciation for all your continued passion on behalf of America's hometown. Due to the COVID-19 pandemic, this year has looked a lot different than prior years. We are entering the final few months of the 191st legislative session. Due to the COVID-19 outbreak, we have yet to pass a budget funding the entirety of the 2021 fiscal year. Currently, we are operating under a 112th budget, which was passed to fund the first month of the 21 fiscal, fiscal year. This is not a new measure. We have used the 112th budgets in years past to fund the first month of a fiscal year, while the legislature and the executive branch were finalizing that year's budget. However, we are urging towns to proceed with caution regarding the budget. Due to the difficult times we are in, revenue is falling far short of what is expected in Governor Baker's initial 2021 budget, which could have a significant impact on local aid. In response to the COVID-19 pandemic and the challenges it presented, the legislature passed a bill signed by the governor to make municipal governance easier and more flexible during this crisis. Town budgets, permitting processes, town meetings, town elections were all made more difficult because of the coronavirus. The highlights of this bill include allowing modifications to the local permitting process to make it easier to complete applications online, extending municipal tax deadlines, and allowing municipalities to extend property tax exemptions and deferrals. The bill also allows for a reduced quorum for town meetings and to allow town meetings to be held virtually. It is because of this bill that I am delivering my remarks to you via video rather than in person. The legislature also passed legislation to assist towns and cities who have incurred unexpected costs due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Representative Muratori and myself worked hard to secure significant earmarks for the town of Plymouth. We were able to secure $50,000 for virtual technology and expenditures and $30,000 for personal protective equipment directly for the town of Plymouth. We know how vital this protective equipment and virtual technology is to assist the people of Plymouth in their fight against the pandemic, and I welcome the opportunity to work closely with Representative Muratori to deliver this relief to the town. The Department of Transportation recently released their Chapter 90 apportionments for fiscal year 2021. We were able to maintain level funding from fiscal year 2020, which was a minor victory given the difficult financial circumstances every level of government must now address. Plymouth will receive $1,576,533 in Chapter 90 funding for the coming fiscal year, and we know it will be put to good use. In an effort to promote public safety and increase business, the Baker administration created the Shared Streets and Space Grant Program. We are happy to announce that Plymouth received $172,727.50 through that grant program. The grant will cover the costs incurred while creating downtown Plymouth into a one-way street in an effort to increase foot traffic and to make the street more conducive to pedestrian traffic. This is an excellent step in ensuring that our local and small businesses downtown are able to continue to thrive during this difficult time. The legislature is working to finalize a bill which will finance governmental infrastructure through the Commonwealth. The bill is currently in a conference committee made up of three members of the Senate and three members of the House. As of right now, the bill includes an earmark of $200,000 for Plymouth Fire Department to replace fire communication tower within the town. My colleagues and I will do everything we can to ensure that this funding remains in the bill. Throughout the COVID-19 crisis, the Baker administration has been diligently working to reduce food insecurity through the Commonwealth. While this has been a serious issue for a long time, it was heightened when the COVID-19 pandemic hit. 
In an effort to curb food security, the Baker administration created the Food Security Infrastructure Grant Program. On July 22nd, MAP Academy Charter School received $122,664 to purchase three vans to help provide meals to students and families. At the end of the last year, Plymouth was awarded a $3 million grant for major repairs to the seawall at the entrance to Plymouth Long Beach. The money will be used to fix the seawall between the entrance guard shack and Sandy Shack, where the wall has been in disrepair for some time. The grant also includes $37,500 for repairs at the Jenny Pond Dam. My colleagues and I are thrilled to see this money go to such a crucial project. Not only will this protect the safety of our beachgoers and provide a more stable entrance and parking area, but it helps Plymouth increase their coastal resiliency against the effects of climate change. We are still waiting on the release of the Chapter 70 funds for fiscal year 2021. Last year, the legislature passed the Student Opportunity Act, which rewrote the formula for Chapter 70 funding. I will continue to work with the legislative delegation to ensure that the Town of Plymouth gets its fair share of funding. I know a lot of families are concerned with our children going back to school in the fall. As a parent, I feel and I share those concerns. Right now, every community is developing three plans for the coming school year. One plan involves bringing children back to school in person. One plan involves remote learning and the last plan involves a mix of remote learning and personal learning. The Department of Elementary and Secondary Education is working hard to produce additional guidance to assist school districts and further details are expected in August. This is a lot still up in the air and DESE is working hard to make sure that the students remain safe. One other major issue that I've been dealing with since my first day in office is one that Plymouth has been dealing with for decades, the closure and the decommissioning of the Pilgrim Nuclear Power Plant. Earlier this year, Attorney General Mara Healy and the Baker administration filed a petition and two lawsuits against Holtec decommissioning. There were serious concerns over the inadequate financial assurances necessary to complete the decommissioning, the management of the spent fuel on site, and Holtec's use of trust fund paid for mostly by Massachusetts electricity ratepayers. Last month, Attorney General Healy reached a settlement with Holtec to protect Plymouth and the Commonwealth from many concerns over health, safety, and financial liabilities. Holtec must maintain $193 million in funds until the cleanup is finished and $38.4 million in funds until all spent nuclear fuel is removed from the plant. The agreement requires Holtec to comply with the state's strict cleanup standards. Holtec will have to submit a site assessment to MassDEP and DPH regarding contamination at the site. MassDEP and DPH will oversee cleanup to ensure the public health and environment are protected. The agreement includes emergency preparedness, requirements, and ensures MEMA will receive continued funding to perform its emergency preparedness functions. This agreement is a positive step to ensuring that Holtec responsibly decommissions the Pilgrim Power Plant, but continued vigilance is required by all of us to ensure the health and safety of all residents. This year has been so much different than the past. Our lives have been disrupted and roiled by a worldwide pandemic, and the future remains uncertain. We are facing incredible health, safety, and financial risks rarely seen before. However, this is the United States of America, and this is America's hometown. We have faced crisis before and become stronger and more resilient. I have no doubt that this town and this country will rise to the challenge before us, and I will be there, along with the rest of the delegation, to join in the battle, provide support, and be a resource whenever and wherever necessary. You have given us the honor and the privilege of representing you on Beacon Hill, and we are with you now more than ever. Thank you for all you do for the town of Plymouth and our country, and thank you for trusting us to serve you. Please stay safe, and may God bless the town of Plymouth and the United States of America.